just lift the top bit, uh, this bit with the, the Bosch sign on, and we lift it up there, we can see our first look inside the drill. Pretty simple, all we need to do is wiggle and pull, and the two will be separated. However, what I don't really like is this. So this is gonna be doing our power delivery or power switching. The first thing to do is to remove the battery from underneath the tool, of course, and then to split the clamshell halves, there are 10 Torx T10 fasteners, which we'll just unscrew quickly and then the two clamshell halves should come apart pretty easily. And that's it. It looks like all of the fasteners are the same length, so no need to put them in little separate piles, which is always a good thing. It's uh, never nice having a whole lot of fasteners that are different lengths and then you take them out and you can't remember where they go. Anyway, there's still some in there. Uh, we'll sort those out shortly, but the clamshell halves should now come apart fairly easily. Maybe I should pull those, uh, maybe I should pull <laughs> those screws out properly. Yeah, I think so. Come on. Well, I suppose it came apart that way. <laughs> So if we just lift the top bit, uh, this bit with the, the Bosch sign on, and we lift it up there, we can see our first look inside the drill. So I'm just gonna slide the little battery tray out here, and that's what it looks like. Quite simple inside, and we'll have a closer look at everything shortly. If we look closely here, we can see that the nut for the belt clip is pressed into a hexagonal sort of shape in the uh, in the casing, it's not molded into the casing. So maybe something you wanna keep in mind uh, if you take your belt clip on and off, um, it is possible that this nut can press out and I had a look, there is enough space for it to fall out the bottom of the battery compartment. So if it comes one day that you're trying to screw it in there and then all of a sudden there's no threads left, it's uh, likely that that little nut has just fallen out and it's a standard size nut so you can just go pop down to the hardware store, buy another one and then press it in here and then you'll be good to go. So as with most of the power tools, uh, the clamshell of this one is made out of a PA6, which is a nylon glass fiber reinforced 30%. And it says SEBS, which is styrene, ethylene, butylene, styrene. Basically it's a thermoplastic elastomer. And what that is, is this rubber over molding on the outside, which gives it the soft uh, grippy feel. That is the SEBS of the thermoplastic elastomer, the TPE. And the nylon bit is this harder plastic in the middle. Something that I did uh, mention, or not mention, but something that I did see is this TPE over molding on the outside here. And we can just see if we look closely along that sort of ridge, the black bit on the outside is the TPE and the, the blue bit on the inside here is the, the PA6 or the nylon. With a lot of other tools, I've seen a small dovetail joint. So the, the TPE will actually be dovetailed into the the, the, the plastic overmold or the, as I should say, the nylon um, clamshell. And you might find one of those dovetails here, 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 kind of dotted around the outside and that helps the, um, the TPE to stay sort of adhered to the clamshell. Sometimes you'll also see little nibs, so they'll make a little hole, random holes placed throughout the, the casing and the TPE will actually protrude through here and it, it just over time helps the, um, helps this, uh, sort of rubber section here stay stay stuck to the clamshell. So not too sure what they're hoping for here. I really hope this um, doesn't come off over time. That would be quite sad, but um, so far looks pretty good. I was looking at the casing again and uh, noticed quite a nice little feature here. So popped out the battery and if you notice, this is the lock for the battery. So it's like got a double action lock. So the first sort of latch would go in there so what, it, what ends up happening is once the, the battery is latched in this first position, it's not actually um, electrically connected to the, uh, to the rest of the tool. And only when you push it sort of all the way in, well, I'll try to get, there we go, onto the second um, latch, then it'll make contact with the contacts and then the tool will be powered up. So quite nice, I suppose. Um, not exactly sure why you would need that. Maybe you want to transport it with a battery half in I don't know, in the tool in the toolbox, you know, maybe you don't want bits and pieces lying around, but 
All right. Maybe some people might like that feature. Quick overview of the business half. We've got the battery sled here at the bottom. We've got the little light over here. Of course, the wiring going up to the control board. The control board being sandwiched between the switch and the motor. Of course, the motor. We've got, uh, looks like a multi-directional fan here, the gearbox and the chuck. Bottom of the battery sled here looks like it's got a small spring here. Now, a lot of the tools have this. I suppose it gives a little bit of reprieve when you slam your battery into the bottom of the tool. I guess it also helps with the vibration, keeping the battery sandwiched into the sled uh, while you're doing some hammer drilling. Also looks uh, all fairly good here. Some good quality plastic, thick connectors, four of them. So he has the positive and the negative. These will carry your main current. And one of these is probably gonna be for uh, sending feedback to the controller, probably like a thermal feedback in the battery. The other one, not actually too sure. Maybe it's some other type of thermal protection. Jingers, this little LED light looks a bit light in the pants. If we pull the little uh, reflector out there. So we've got just a little transparent reflector, slides into the case, but have a look at this, my goodness. We've got a really small little LED with literally just the wires soldered onto um, the the legs of the LED now yeah I don't know not too impressed with that um, in most of the tools I've seen with this type of setup there's been uh, the LED is onto a little circuit board and then of course the circuit board is connected to the rest of the circuit uh, you know I'm guessing with a bit of vibration <laughs> these little legs can can break off fairly easily I mean there's quite a lot of leverage on them so yeah not too impressive but hopefully we never have problems with that this little piece is a polycarbonate PC. Doesn't make any difference though. I think to have a closer look at the rest of the tool, we're going to have to pull everything out the case. Just going to be a little bit careful here. Don't, of course, want to break anything. So we should be able to just lift the motor, speed control, switch the whole lot out in one go. And there we go. I'll just take the case away there. This half of the case looks pretty much the same as the other half of the case. We can look at the little speed selector bit of plastic, the little speed selector switch. It's also made of a PA6 glass fiber reinforced 30%. It's got a little spring clip here to uh, ensure that it stays in either position one or position two. Here's the forward reverse selector, just a small piece of plastic and it is made out of ABS. To separate the gearbox from the motor is pretty simple. All we need to do is wiggle and pull and the two will be separated. We'll have a look at the uh, gearbox and chuck assembly a little bit later. Let's just have a look at what we've got going on here on the motor side and the speed control. Just looking underneath the battery sleigh, we can see the plastic is made out of PA66, which is nylon, glass fiber reinforced at 25%. So shouldn't have any problems there. And there's a small sticker showing the type number, the supplier code, the date of manufacture, I would imagine that's April 21, software version and the hardware version. Also, if any of you have uh, watched any of my tool reviews before, um, we can see that the connectors here, the main power connectors to the battery sleigh, underneath this bit of glue, yeah, epoxy type stuff, uh, these will like, very, very likely just be soldered. They're definitely not gonna be crimped and bolted. Uh, this is not my favorite style of connection. Uh, because of you know vibration so if these are soldered they can vibrate and then you get dry joints however i do like this though that they are probably soldered underneath here and the, to kind of limit the vibration and maybe um, other environmental factors um, affecting the soldered joint they've put this uh, glue over that so pretty happy with that actually looking at the switch we can see the brand is salt team unfortunately i don't know anything about that name uh, but it is connected to the board via this ribbon cable and the rating on the switch is 1 amp and 42 volts DC. Although it's uh, unlikely that it's carrying that type of current, there's probably a variable resistor in here, just feeding information back to the uh, speed control of the MOSFETs, telling, basically telling them how hard to drive the motor or how much current to drive through to the motor. So if we have a look closely in the gap here, we can see here's the little push rod of the switch. So as you push the trigger in, that push rod presses and uh, actuates whatever's happening inside the switch. So over time, uh, I believe that these things can uh, collect dust, dust can, you know, very dusty environments, and um, the dust can ingress and possibly start messing around with stuff in the switch. So it would be nice to see 
a O-ring, well the O-ring would be probably in here or a bellows or something. There's not a lot of tools that have this, but also just to point out that um, this one doesn't. Looking at the motor and the speed control assembly, we can see that this is quite a compact little unit. So these two things are mounted really close together, which I'm not really a big fan of um, because of heat. But we can see that because it's a brushless motor, there are three main uh, power leads or power wires that go to the motor. They are soldered underneath the underneath the speed control board and they're also soldered onto this little board um, onto the motor. Also these little small wires here, these connections, well if it was in focus, uh, these will connect the hall sensors underneath here and they'll feed positional information back to the speed control so that it knows how to do its thing. If we try and have a closer look inside here, of course all the components are really small and those hall sensors plug onto the plug onto the PCB here with uh, just a normal little plug, you can unplug that if you want to. However, what I don't really like is this. So this is gonna be doing our power delivery or power switching. Um, and there's not much in the form of heat sinking happening here. And also because this is so close to our motor, of course, when you're using the drill really heavily, this motor is likely gonna produce a lot of heat. And so is the speed control, all, all these, um, uh, I would assume these are MOSFETs here. They're probably gonna also produce a lot of heat in close proximity, not too sure how they get, how well they're going to radiate heat out. Uh, although, keep in mind, we do have a fan here, and this fan spinning is blowing air directly onto, onto all of these heated components. So maybe it does work. Of course, these guys are engineers that design these things, um, so I'm sure they've taken that into account. But a lot of times what you'll see is um, the speed control is actually mounted to the bottom of a battery sled where there's quite a big aluminium heat sink and that's able to radiate heat away from uh, away from the working components. I do however like uh, yeah, that uh, all of these um, capacitors are also glued into position. You always want to see that um, same thing over here. These hall sensor wires are also glued into position so this is going to help with uh, vibration or it's going to help the wires not break due to vibration. So looking at the bottom of the board, we can see um, a whole lot of small components as well. And these little wires on this side uh, lead down to that LED light. They are glued, which is pretty cool. Uh, also the main power leads coming in from the battery, the red and black. Uh, those are soldered, of course, and glued. And then we can see our ribbon cable leading into our switch here. So, I don't know, all looks pretty good. I suppose uh, you could also repair this board a lot easier than you could other boards, there's a lot of other speed controls that I've seen where the circuit is completely potted. So if something simple breaks on it and you are able to replace a single component, it's not really going to be possible. But with this type of, with this type of setup, uh, if you are somewhat skilled at working with uh, micro components, well, you might be able to repair your own drill. Looking at the back of the fan on the motor, we can see that it's made out of nylon PA6 glass fiber reinforced 35%. This is likely going to be the part number and the bearings are 625RS. Now there's one of these bearings on the back of the motor and there's one of these bearings on the front of the motor. So that's, that's pretty good. Looking at the design of uh, the fan, we can see that it is also slightly out of focus. There we go. The, uh, the fan blades are straight, meaning that this is a multi-directional fan. So whether you're using the drill in forward and reverse, it's going to provide uh, sufficient cooling in either direction. I would assume that is the part number for the motor and also here's the bearing on the front of the motor and this is a sintered sun gear that's just print, pressed onto the motor's shaft. Now of course this is the input for the gearbox which we'll have a look at shortly. So looking at the gearbox uh, that is probably the part number and we can see that the outer casing of the gearbox is plastic however inside all the gears are metal and they are sintered gears. And if you have a look, there's also this little wire selector, and this is going to be your speed selector between speed one and speed two. So if you have a close look in the gap here, you can see there's this little flat metal spring, and there are three indexing points. Now, there's uh, one, two, and three. That's for selecting driving, drilling, and hammer mode, and that little spring sort of indexes with each one of those recesses. Now, what I could see happening over time uh, there we go, you can see it jumping from one recess to the next. And what I could see happening over time is that if you are changing the modes of your drill really, really often, uh, of course the metal is not going to wear out, but 
the little slots might wear a little bit. To open up the gearbox, we've basically got these two little metal spring clips holding it together. There's one on that side and one on that side. And you basically just slide them off. So I'm using that same Torx uh, T10 and you're just gonna slide it off like that. And we can see that it takes a bit of force, but it comes off fairly easily. So there's one of them that is off and I'll do the same with the other side. Now, of course, I'm gonna hold this gearbox casing together in case it wants to spring apart. Well, there we go. And the second one is off. And now we should have access to the gearbox. We might also have to take this speed selector ring out. So I'm just gonna unclip it from the gearbox. All you do is you unclip the one side and it should come free. Fairly simple. Now we can just pull the top of the gearbox off and guys, just be careful here because all the gears might want to pop out. I'm actually going to see if I can get everything to stay in there and just pull the plastic off the top so that you can see what's happening. There we go. So if we have a look inside there, we can see we've got our ring gear in the right hand side. We've got our planetary gears, these three gears here, and then the sun gear, which was on the on the shaft of our motor that goes in the center. So as we can see, it definitely is all metal gears. So as we take it apart, just uh, carefully watch what's happening because when we put it back together, it'll just be done in the reverse order. There are these uh, three little gears and it doesn't look like they have a direction. They look both the same on either side. So we'll just put them aside. One, two, and three. And then we can put out this next little gear set here and we can see inside there what it looks like. Well, hopefully if it was focused, it would help you guys. There we go. We can just put that down that way and we can see the next set of little planetary gears here. Now these gears are slightly different to those. So of course, just remember that the, they come out of the second stage. So we'll just take that one, put that there. We'll take the second one, put that there. And let's see if we can grab that third one. We'll grab the third one and put it down there. These also don't look like they are a single direction, so it doesn't really matter which way you put them back in. So we'll keep those a little bit separate and then we can pull out the next stage here. And there we go. That's what that next stage looks like. So what we're left with here is another ring gear. Uh, we should be able to pull this out. There we go. We can see our ring gear. And we've got a little washer. Let's see if I can get that out. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Um, I've seen this before where we've got a washer being retained by a ring, a retaining ring. You've actually got to just turn this ring slightly and then it'll come out. Let's see if we can do it with that same Torx T10. Yep, pretty easily actually. Just sort of turn it into the little openings, into the slots, and this ring should just come right out. There we go. And we've got, of course you can see the washer underneath there, and you can see the ring. So we'll just set that aside, and underneath here is a third set of gears. Now, this has got four planetary gears in it. Again, these little these little gears uh, probably don't have a direction. So if we look on that side, and if I look on that side, they pretty much look the same. So I think that'll be fine. We can just set them aside. Come on. There we go. Now, what you want to do is be careful with uh, this um, bit of ring gear that's here because once you take this out, there's going to be probably three little pins underneath here. I know the DeVault uh, drills have five, but I think these have three and that's part of the, the locking mechanism. So we'll just pull this, we'll just pull this um, ring gear out, see if I can get it out there. Come on. There we go. That just pulls out. Now this does have a direction. It's flat on the top and it's got these little 
um, little rises on the bottom. And you can just see them there. There we go. So we'll put that down. And uh, now our center can come out. So let's actually just see if I can get the centered again and see that uh, you guys can see what's happening. If we pull the center piece out there, I'm just going to pull it out carefully and show you what it looks like. Come on. There we go. That's what it looks like on, well, if it was in focus, that's what it looks like on the bottom side. And as I thought, there are three little pins. And that is part of the sort of the one-way locking mechanism for when you want to tighten your tighten the chuck or loosen the chuck. And you can see, yeah, there's these little balls. Well, they actually look like little balls, but they're not. It's actually got a round end, um, and it's got a little shaft. Well, let's actually see if we can pull them out. There we go. We can see those little those little pins. Don't lose these. Um, your drill will be mostly useless without them. So we'll just set them aside there. They are equally spaced in the gap. We'll set those aside down there. And we've got another small metal ring. Let's see if I can pull this out. I actually need a little flat screwdriver. Yeah, come on. Almost. And there we go. That's the next part of the gearbox. And then we've got this shaft, which basically connects directly to the chuck. So these little things here, um, these little balls, or well, I should say they're not balls, but uh, they are going to ride up on the underside of this ring gear here. And they ride over those little, those little ramps. And that's part of the clutch system. So let's see if we can get these out and I'll show you what they look like. Well, I'm going to turn it over. There we go. Oh, these are actually balls. Sorry, my mistake. So we can see there are little, there are little ball bearings uh, that are part of that clutch system. Now in the DeVault drills, um, it's not quite a little ball. It's actually a small shaft with a bald end. Oopsie. Let's not, uh, let's not lose these. So we'll put those back there. Um, and yeah, that's basically the inside of the gearbox. So we can see that it is all, of course, plastic, but everything is metal inside. So let's put it back together. <laughs> so I think we'll start with the balls and uh, we'll pop the balls, one in there. Should be a couple of these. Come on, two. Pop that in there. Three. Oops. Four. Five. And one more. This must be hiding somewhere, yeah? I would imagine. Hopefully. There we go. Five and six. So there are six little balls. Then we'll put this little ring back in to the inside. That should just slot right in. Then these little pins, remember we removed them. So basically you can see on the, let me just show you here quickly, but on the shaft, the spindle shaft here, there's three little recesses. Now don't align them with the recesses, we align them in the gaps on these bigger, wider sections. So it might be a little bit tricky, but I think you guys will get it. Come on, as I said, a bit tricky. So we pop the one in there. We'll turn it around, of course pop the next one in there, and then the next one. In there, and we can see they are all equally spaced. Now that we have our three pins equally spaced there, we can take this lower section and you can see there's actually um, openings in that lower section. Those openings are going to align with the pins, so just take your time and you should get this right. It might take you one or two tries. Well, there we go. Actually, first try and it is in. Then we take this ring gear, the one with the little ramps on it. We can pop that into position. That's just going to slide in. There are no indexing pins or anything like that. That just slides straight in. Then we can take our four uh, 
little gears, our four planetary gears. We can slide those back in. Oops. Might be easier to just use your hands. Of course, I'm trying to use tweezers here so that I don't block the view so that you guys can see what's happening. Come on, there we go. And this whole lot slides together fairly easily. I must say, there's not a lot of grease in this gearbox, although it probably doesn't need a lot. Next thing to go back on is this little ring. So let's get this whole lot together. We can see it there. Maybe try and pick it up. Oh, sorry guys, I'm going to use my hands. I might, might block the, the view, but basically we've got our we've got our washer. We're going to pop that back into position and then this retaining ring. So we pop that retaining ring back in and of course don't forget to rotate it back into the locked position. So if we just rotate it anti-clockwise and then it locks all the way around. So after we've done that, we can put this little ring back in, this next ring gear. Now, if you have a look closely, it's got these little uh, cog type shapes on the bottom and those are gonna index with this retaining ring. So we just put that back in there and this might be a little bit tricky, but what we can do is pop that one that we took out earlier. You might have to wiggle it a little bit. Now I'm also going to use my hand again just to get all of those gears aligned. Oh, there we go. Just dropped straight in. Next up is the uh, sort of center, or the, the, whoops, going all over the place there. <laughs> Um, is the middle section of three gears, three planetary gears. That's one. Okay. That is, sorry, I'm going to use my hands again. That's two, and I'll use my hand again. You can see it's quite easy to do it with your hands. That's number three. Then we'll put in this final stage. So there it is over there. We'll pop that back in, and we'll pop Again, I'm going to use my hands. We'll just put these three gears back on. And there we have it. So all that we have to do now is place the top of our gearbox back on you. Now again, this might require a little bit of wobbling or weaving back and back and forth, but you guys will get it. So when you're putting the top half of the case back on, um, you could, you could probably get this 180 degrees out of phase, but if you have a look on the side here where you've got the little print marks for drive, drill, and hammer, and you have a look on the top half of the case, you've got these little pivot points. So there's one over there, and where's the other one? Okay, so there's one over there, and there's one over there. So those two pivot points you can actually see on this half of the top case, and they must be on the half that points towards um, these little driving symbols or these little mode symbols. So you kind of align it just like that. And now what you're gonna to have to do is to wiggle these gears so that eventually they all mesh with all of these um, all of these planetary gears so that they eventually mesh with the ring gear on the outside. Now this might take a little bit of working back and forth, but I think you'll eventually get it and you'll see, see it'll just snap into place. There we go. Yep. Those, those two are in. This one is not in yet. I've just taken the top case off again just to have a second go at it. And we'll spin those gears, just get them to mesh nicely. There we go, one of them is gone already. We need to get the next one to go. As I mentioned, it is a little bit finicky to do, but you'll eventually get it. There we go. So, after a little bit of fiddling, we can see that the gearbox is nicely flush together again. And all that we have to do is slide these little retaining sort of clips into place. Also might be a little bit fiddly. There we go. We'll just slide it on. I'm gonna slide that one on a little bit and before the other side of the case jumps out, we'll slide the other side on. So just, just like that, and then we can use our T10 again, not really using it how it's intended to be used, but we can see that that clip is now home, and we'll do the same 
for the clip on that side and that clip is now home. So all looking pretty good so far. Last thing to do is to clip in the little speed selector ring. So we'll just, you might have to turn the gearbox upside down. Uh, now you can't really see it in there, but if you have a look really closely, in this gap, right? I don't know if you can see it in there. If you look really closely in that gap, you can see there's a little, um, there's a little ridge in, in one of those ring gears. So what we're going to do is these little wire ends has got to clip into that little ridge. So that's also going to be a little bit tricky, but that side is in. And if we turn it over and we clip the other side in, just like that, and there we go. It is clipped in. It is a little bit easier than maybe what it initially looks, but we are all now good to go. Joining the motor back up to the gearbox is as simple as it was when we took it apart. All you've got to do is kind of wiggle it a little bit and then it'll go into place. And then you're ready to put the rest of this back into the two clamshells, screw it together and the tool should work. So I'm gonna do that off camera quickly and then we'll see if the tool works. Cool, so it's all back together and is it gonna let the smoke out? Well, we're about to see, I don't think so. There we go. Everything is working once again. Cool.